It is important to check the standard and quality of the carcass by looking at the overall shape, fatness and weight. Every carcass should have a slaughter ticket, which includes details of the time of slaughter, the venue and other information. This is important from an audit point of view in terms of traceability and inspection. The inspection should be in accordance with the fresh meat hygiene regulations, which can be seen on the respective stamps. To remove the fours of lamb, count six ribs up from the chest cavity. On the internal surface of the cavity, count one, two, three, four, five, six, and push the knife in between the two ribs. Bring the cut up to the breast end and repeat this process on the other side. Join the two cuts together with the knife and continue by sawing through the sternum bone. Complete the cut using a steak knife, going down onto the chine bone and the backbone. Then finish by sawing and removing the fours through the chine bone. It's good practice in the butchery industry to ensure that any bone dust or fat particles are removed. We have now removed a pair of fours across the sixth and seventh ribs of the lamb and produced a wholesale cut. The next stage of the process is to remove the middle. This involves removing the breast and the loins from the legs. The correct point to begin this process is at the end of the ilium or hip bone, which can be identified by running a finger down the ribs of the carcass until you feel an indentation at the end of the pelvic bone. Mark this point with a cut, then turn the lamb to the other side and repeat the process. As with the fours, join the two cuts together, then saw through the lumbar vertebrae and remove any bone dust and excess fat from both the middle and the legs. We now have three wholesale cuts that are identified within the industry as fours, middle and legs. Wholesale cuts are prepared as far as possible for the retail butcher before he produces his own cuts to his own specifications. The first stage is to separate the legs at the natural division which runs between the legs of lamb and the cartilaginous joint, cutting between the two pelvic bones with a knife. Then separate the tailbone and chump bone, carefully sawing through the central line of the tail. To prepare further for retail cutting, begin by removing the eisen bone, which is a combination of the sacral vertebrae, part of the tailbone and the coccyx. Then remove the pelvic bone. To do this, you will need to identify where the bone runs and loosen the meat that forms in part of the pelvic bone. This will expose the bone clearly. The ball and socket joint of the hip should now be visible. Crack the joint and separate using the natural division so that the pelvic bone can be removed cleanly. We're now left with an area of meat that is ideal for several different purposes, including lamb steaks and joint of lamb. Before we can begin to cut the fours, we must remove the scrag with an angular cut from the shoulder. Maintain the angle relative to the four by sawing through the cervical vertebrae. This would commonly be used and sold as lamb neck rings for casserole and Irish stew. The first separation of the fours is to saw through the center of the dorsal vertebrae, making sure that the bone is relatively even on both sides. Again, remove the bone dust. To prepare further for retail cutting, take the foreend of lamb, which has the foreleg with respective bone structure, and the rib cage with the respective bones attached to it, the sternum, dorsal and cervical vertebrae. Now we can begin the racking process. To rack the fore out means removing all the rib bones as a sheet boning process taking the bone out in one go, removing the rib cage in a sheet manner. To further prepare for retail cuts, 
areas of blood-stained tissue around the neck and the area of fat that lies below the sternum bone should be removed. It's also important to cut out a piece of tissue called the ligament nuchi. This is situated at the back of the neck down to the point of the head. If necessary, we can remove the knuckle by simply sawing it off. The fours are now ready for retail cuts, which will be dependent on the client or the customer's specification. The first stage in cutting the middle is to identify and remove the two kidneys, remembering to trim off excess fat, including the suet fat. The next stage is to separate the two loins with the respective breasts. This is done by sawing down the chine bone. Once this is completed, take the loins to the edge of the cutting board and make a slow cut down the central line of the chine. Turn it around and make the cut on the other side. Join the cuts together with the knife and then saw through. There should now be two respective middles, which we call the loin and the breast. Again, remember to trim any excess fat. Now that we have the two separate sections, we must prepare these further for the retail cuts. In this instance, we'll begin with the breast. The first stage of this cutting procedure is to remove the breastbone. To do this, make a mark twice the length of the eyepiece to ensure that the two sides are of equivalent weight, and then mark the end between the two levels of fat. Use the knife to join the two cuts, making the line as straight as possible, and saw through to produce a breast of lamb. I'm producing a breast of lamb. Breast of lamb. Now that we've prepared the breast, we'll focus on the loin. The loin has two identifiable areas, which are known in the UK as the loin and the best end of lamb. The loin is identified by the fillet muscle or tenderloin muscle, which can be found in the lumbar region. The best end of lamb is the part of the loin with the respective rib bones. The rib bones are attached to the dorsal vertebrae. To separate the two, follow down the line of the last rib and separate with a saw. We now have the two separate pieces that can be used for retail cuts and are often sold as cutlet chops. So, to recap, we take the primal cuts, the legs, the fours and the middle. In this instance, beginning with the legs, we separated them cutting down the natural division. Separate the tailbone and chump and remove the eisen bone. Then remove the pelvic bone and crack the joint. To cut the fours, remove the scrab, then saw through the centre of the dorsal vertebrae. Rack the four and remove bloodstained tissue and the ligament nuchi. To cut the middle, identify and remove the two kidneys, separate the loins into the loins and the breast, and remove the breastbone to produce one cut, the breast. To produce the loin, separate into the loin and the best end.